Since the Bitex 40 transceiver came out at the low price of $45 US, users have wanted improved frequency stability. There's ways you can do it. They vary from changing some resistor values, an outboard free-running VFO, or a DDS VFO. The latter seems to have been most popular. It works well, but the big thing is the current consumption. A DDS adds 100 milliamps or more to the received current consumption of your transceiver. If you're into ultralight portable operating, summits of the air, or hiking, then the extra batteries required to drive such a current hog are not acceptable. Instead, you want things to be as light as possible, especially if you're going on a multi-day hike or mountain climb. This brings us to another approach, the use of a ceramic resonator. I'm not sure if this is due to design or serendipity, but Farhan used an IF of 12 MHz. The local oscillator is around 5 MHz. 4.8 to 5 gives 7 to 7.2. Now it so happens that you can get ceramic resonators on 4.92 MHz. 12 minus 4.92 is 7.08 in the 40 meter band. And there's crystals. 4.915, which gives you a difference of 7.085, also in 40 metres. This is the circuit of the original VFO in the bit X. Remove L4, which is the yellow toroid that determines the frequency of the local oscillator, and put in your 4.92 ceramic resonator. Have a listen on a nearby general coverage receiver, with a probe near the local oscillator you should be able to find the signal around 4.8 MHz. That's good for 7.2 MHz, but here in Australia and Europe, most of the activity on SSB is a bit below. We need nearer to 7.1. In order to get that, what you do is you remove two capacitors, C94 and C95. That's surface mount. You use a soldering iron to heat them up, both sides and use a small screwdriver to flick them off. It's all shown in this diagram. Reducing the capacitance increases the frequency of your ceramic resonator oscillator which because we're subtracting it from our 12 MHz IF gives you a lower frequency. The only other thing you need to do is to turn the trimmer capacitor to minimum capacitance, that is, with the plates unmeshed. I did it and I got about 7.065 to 7.115. That's quite good here in Australia and probably Europe, but there's times when you want somewhat higher frequencies. You do that by adding some capacitance again. 22 picofarad gives you another range, about 7.115 up to about 7.145. You add a toggle switch so you can switch between them. Even more versatile is if you use a center off toggle switch. When it's in center position, nothing is connected, which means that you've got the original tuning range. When it's in one position, a 22 picofarad capacitor is connected, so you get the 7.115 to 7.145 range approximately I mentioned before. And when it's flicked to the other side, you can connect a bigger capacitor. I used 39 picofarad. That gives about 7.142 to 7.163. In that way, we've got three overlapping tuning ranges. From 7.068, to 7163. That is nearly 100 kilohertz and the most active part of the 40 meter SSB section in Australia. I wasn't trying to be smart as I said before, I just didn't know how to do it. This is a close up of the ceramic resonator mod. This is the ceramic resonator installed in the same place that the yellow tuning coil was. The trimmer you see here has been set to minimum capacitance to ensure maximum tuning range. The connections from the band segment switch 
uh, this one which goes from the ceramic resonator I've been able to solder it straight to the board and this one which just goes from ground I used one of the pins for the external VFO socket These ranges are wide enough to give good coverage of the band but not so wide as to require a vernier reduction drive you might want even higher frequencies, especially if you're in North America and most of the activity is around 7.2. Here's some suggestions. The ceramic resonator setup is a lot more stable than the free running oscillator, but there is still a little bit of drift. If you want more stability, I suggest instead a 4.915 MHz quartz crystal. You will get a little bit of tuning range, but it won't be very much, only a couple of kilohertz. To increase it, there's a few things you can do. There's other ideas as well. If you wanted to use CW on your BitX and wanted coverage of the CW end of the band, maybe try a five megahertz crystal. Put that in a VXO, with the two crystals in parallel, the series coil optimised for maximum pulling range, then you might be able to cover the bottom 10 kilohertz of 40 metres. A 5 meg ceramic resonator, if available, could give you even more pulling range. It just didn't make sense to me, but now, now I understand. I just looked up your full time. The next bumble bar of the yard. It's good to have a couple of antennas, then you can do AB comparisons. I've described a simple modification of the Bitex transceiver. It only takes 20 or 30 minutes to do, is super cheap, and I think you'll be delighted with the results. If you want to get more from low power amateur radio, don't miss minimum QRP. It's a Kindle ebook available for under $5 US. Just search the title on Amazon or visit my website vk3ya.com. Or if antennas are more your thing, check out hand carried QRP antennas. Over 200 pages of practical antenna ideas for the portable or pedestrian mobile operator. Again, under $5 US and again via Amazon. Victory Park, Chelsea the venue of the next Melbourne QRP by the Bay, Saturday, February 4, 2017. Bring antennas, transmitters, accessories and projects and catch up with like-minded people or give them a go and put them on the air. That's Melbourne QRP by the Bay, Saturday, February 4, 2017 from 3pm.